My colleague Cindy Mabe is out in Soweto on Villagazi Street. We are commemorating 47 years of the uprising that took place on this very day, the 16th of June in 1976. And Cindy is out at Sakumzi Restaurant. What is the latest, Cindy? Good morning, William, and to our viewers, Sanbonani and Dumelang, Tobela. It's wonderful to be with you here on the 47th commemoration of June 16, 1976. It has been a very nostalgic, almost emotional uh, day as well so far, because in truth, none of us who are alive today can truly uh, appreciate or experience the trauma, the hurt, especially of mothers who lost young children during the uh, June 16, 1976. The blood that was shed and also how those tears essentially um, still uh, decorate our path, if you will. We're joined here by Re Mosala Mosehomi, who is the author of uh, the Soweto Explodes, The Beginning of the End of Apartheid. And I'll just quickly read uh, Re Mosehomi, uh, the special dedication that you made here. He says, this book was written in memory of the brave students and youth of South Africa, especially those that answered the call of duty. Some fell by the wayside, never seen or heard of again. Others lie in unknown or unmarked graves and their beloved loved ones will never ever know their fate good morning and thank you so much for joining us i mean the rest of it is is quite emotive as well it really pulls at the heartstrings just your inspiration in writing the book if you you can give us your your, your thought process to that thank, uh, thank you very much for inviting me uh, and particularly to talk about about the book because the book captures a lot of the history of uh, uh, of June 16. What motivated me to write the book was the fact that June 16 is something that has never happened anywhere in the world. It is only in South Africa. You can go through history books. Where in the world have you seen 14 year old, 15 year old, 16 year old face the might of a military? Where in the world have you seen the 16-year-old, the 14-year-old starting a, a revolution that changed the whole world? You know, when uh, June 16 started, on the day of June 16, it was the first time, for example, the civil, uh, what they call the civil, uh, 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 you know, body of the um, defense, on the, of the defense, you know, they had to come since the days of the 60s. So this is a history that is never forget, and it can never be compared to any history. Yeah. That is why that, that's compelled me to write the book. Yes, and, and Remo Sakumo, you, you also talk about young people, just the bravery, the resilience that they had, the courage. But they did not go, necessarily go in there to meet their fate or their death or demise. This had been brewing. We are told anecdotally as well that their parents, out of concern for their safety, would say, do not do that. Don't go and, you know, march against the system, against the past laws or the imposition of Afrikaans as a medium instruction language. And yet they were compelled. I suppose it's destiny that had brought them to that pain. Uh, you know, no parent would say to the child, go and do this, because during those days it was at the height of apartheid, where you could be arrested for nothing but be charged for something. So no parent would, would say that, but the need arose. Remember that when the student went out to go and demonstrate, they didn't say we are going to fight. They didn't say we are going to confront the police. They didn't even know that the police will be there. They went there to come and to go and express solidarity with the students of Puti, which is a school that is just next to Orlando West, because that's a school that, that was the first one to boycott the, uh, the use of Africans language and they started that on May the 17th which is one of the critical days that led to June 16 because from the 17th from May 17th that's when things changed completely and that's how it led to other students marching from different schools to come here because they were coming to pledge solidarity with the students of, um, of, uh, of Putin. Mm -hmm. And, and what was or who was at the center of it all? I mean, there had to be a leader or was it mainly more about a movement, as you're saying, a solidarity towards a particular common enemy? 
it was convergence a of leadership ideas activi activities and quite a lot for example if you look at the history uh, of uh, the history just of what happened on june 16 there are three important dates that shaped that day the first day was 1974 whereby the nayo nayo national youth organization by then asks uh, made sure that sazam is, uh, you know, is reformulated because Sazim was already dead by then. But then when Sazim was, for, was, 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 you know, was rejuvenated, is the one that organized the meeting of June 13. And from the meeting of June 13, that's where the decision was taken from that June 16 must take place. Then from there, you have the uh, uh, Puti, the, uh, the school where Seth Mazubugo was, um, uh, was the head prefect. So what happened is that when the students started um, protesting against Africans, they went to him and said, hey, we have been forced to speak on Africa. So what, what do we do about it? So Seth had to deal with, Seth Mazibugo had to deal with all those things. But what was interesting was the fact that the reason why it's uh, 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 Putin, this school here, was so much the center of it, it was because the students that were in Puti are the students that come from surrounding schools. So if you can remember, that had started before, the year before 1975, when these small schools, the Tula Sizwe, the Bele, and all that, because the Africaners, they had a 12th year program, and they were starting it in 1975. So that by the time the 12th year start, uh, fin uh, finishes, the, they must have a baked potato of just a useless person, like, you know, or, uh, out, uh, out of these children. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the, we understand that the schooling system, and I think we still have remnants thereof that yeah. had relegated black people to inferior quality of education so that you would be a mere, uh, 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 what's it, a, a mega laborer yeah. or, uh, to provide cheap labor to the then African uh, Nationalist Party. Yeah. But we are here now in 2023 and young people are saying, yes, we understand the rich history and the importance why we need to reflect on it, but how do we then take it forward so that it benefits us in our current circumstances? Every generation has a responsibility because the struggle is one struggle. Struggle is not pieces like this. You, you go back to the days of the, you know, the, the colonial wars. You come back to the days of the Nelson Mandela, the Sobukwes, the Steve Pickles. You come back into the 70s. So the struggle is one. So where we are today, with the generation that is here today, is because they are in another phase of the revolution. And that, and that puts a certain responsibilities to them. As we were talking with, a friend, with my friend, for example, Lord Sticks Mabuse, we were saying that the generation of the Nelson Mandela's, of the Sobukas and others, they said freedom in our lifetime. Our generation in the 70s, you know, and we said we are going to be the last generation to be oppressed. So this generation also will have its, responsi its responsibilities. Now what is happening with the struggle is that at the beginning, Things look difficult. They, they look impossible, and this is what we faced when we're facing the, the the apartheid system, and that's what they are facing today: the problem of the drugs, the problem of unemployment. All these things are just falling on them like an avalanche, and they look impossible and very, very uh, difficult for them today. But as a youth, you have a responsibility that that must be tackled and that must be completed. And, and, and one could also say the benefits of yeah. all the sacrifices that we are now reaping uh, is the fact that the youth of today, albeit they're not a, a homogenous group, mm -hmm. but they are more diverse and possibly more integrated than what the youth of 1976 were. How do we utilize that diversity uh, and, and make sure that we unify young people so that they can fulfill their mandate and mission? Fortunately, the youth of today, first of all, we left freedom for them. At least th that's what we delivered. So the platform on which they are working is completely different from ours because with us we had to fight. Their responsibility today is to preserve that or to look after that uh, to, to, to that freedom that we have, and from there enrich it and develop it and to uh, and do all that. So they today they are social medias. Today they are. They, at least there are certain freedoms. I'm saying there are a lot of freedoms in which they can use. They can go to the different to the schools that we never went to. They can go into the jobs that we never went to. They can come together without being forced to say that this is a cosa, this is a what. They can go into one school. So they have more chance, power, 
an opportunity to come together and form just one unit that can fight and that can go ahead. I truly, truly feel like I'm in the presence of greatness and uh, standing on the shoulders of giants this morning. I'm so grateful. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really, 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 really appreciate it. And I'm sure we'll have an extensive discussion on the book. That's Remus Salah Mosekhumi, uh, who is the author of Soweto Explodes, the beginning of the end of apartheid, which he was saying he found it difficult to publish in this country and only uh, had an appetite in the UK or in the US. We'll discuss all of that as days progress. But thank you for joining us.